But you all, like, I know these kids, like, they're not going to listen. Like, my cousin. Yeah, some, some of them. Listen, some of them. Yeah. Do you like one, sir? Just get one, sir? Yeah. That's, um, and uh, what's your name? Camilla. Camilla, that's a nice name. Nicholas. Um, I'm actually doing here what I wish, doing for these students and yourself, what I wish Christians had done for me. Because I grew up in the public school system. I used to be in your shoes, in their shoes. And no Christians ever did this for me. Not once. And they never gave me the gospel that I can recall. Never showed me that I was living in a holocaust of babies. Um, the history teacher, he came out to talk to me briefly. He thinks it's okay to murder babies in the womb. Says they're not human beings. And yeah, he teaches about, you know, Hitler and the Nazis, right, in the history textbooks. Even the history teacher is, got, is wrong on this. You have a history teacher in there, I didn't get his name, that's basically standing with Hitler and the Nazis. Think about that. Because when, when you say the, 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 the pre-born are not human beings in the womb, and that's okay to murder them, you're standing with Hitler and the Nazis, you agree with them. Because that's, that's exactly what they said about Jewish people. Did you like one, sir? So, has some important information in there. That's what Hitler and the Nazis said. The Jews are parasites, they're not human beings. And, it, and hit, everything Hitler did in, the, in Nazi Germany was legal. That's what Martin Luther King Jr. said. He said, every, never, never forget that everything Hitler did in, in Nazi Germany was legal. Every, every murder that's happening in America, a baby's in the womb. Babies are scheduled to be murdered in Tampa this morning. They're out today. All of them are legal. Well, they're, they're, sta they're sanctioned by the state. They're not legal according to God's law, and they're not, it's not constitutional, but the state, the authorities allow it to happen. So in that, in that sense, I mean, it's legal. It's allowed to happen with no consequences, no penalties yet. And so that's, and I wish Christians had told me that when I was in high school. I had no idea. I didn't know about this Holocaust and babies um, being murdered. We lived in genocide every day. I didn't know about it until I was 22 years old. 22. So all, all of you young people, you're finding out about this years before I found out about it. And people that, like, they joke about it, that's what they be like, oh, yeah. I'm like, that's kind of messed up. Oh, it is? Like, that, don't say that. You have like, a conscience, yeah. Ms. Camilla, you have a conscience. Yeah, like, you understand this is evil. Like, that's messed up. Like, especially when you joke about it, it's like, that's messed up. Don't do that. Oh, yeah, there, there's, there's been, this is for young people. Would you like one, sir? Some important information regarding, regarding where you stand before God and they were living in a holocaust, a, a, a genocide all throughout America where thousands of babies in the womb are being mass murdered and uh, mothers are murdering their children in the womb and right t today in Tampa there's several places where parents are doing this to their children this, do you know what you're looking at right here? well just, just, just look at it and think you know what you're looking at? What's that? It's a it's a baby's leg and foot. You can see the toes, the baby's toes. It's you may not be able to tell because um, I, I mean at first glance because when you rip someone's body apart, it may be hard to tell what you're looking at when you when their whole body's been torn to pieces, right? So this baby was torn to pieces. This this you can see where his leg was torn off. And this is this is going to happen to children this morning in Tampa, literally. This isn't TV. This isn't Netflix. This, this isn't YouTube. This is real life. It's happening to little babies this morning. Not far from this school. I'm going to one of the places um, soon, here soon, uh, where they're doing this to children this morning. So I want you to think about that. Um, what's your name? Eric. Okay. Miss Camilla and, and, and Eric. I'm Nicholas. I want you to think about that today while you're in school reading um, books, listening to your teachers. Think about the fact that little babies are literally being murdered right now as I'm reading this textbook as I'm listening to the teacher Little babies are having their skulls crushed their heads cut off their bodies their arms and legs are being torn off their bodies Their bodies are being ripped to pieces and thrown in the trash can are you guys trying to get to class? class is in session right now ma'am the Christian classroom is in session What happened? No, I'm cool. I can listen. Yep. I don't got no they're learning something very important right now, ma'am. Alright. So that, um, so that, they're not going to teach you any of this in the school. How do I know? I never learned any of this in school, right? And, and you have students here who think it's okay to murder babies. I've already talked to a few of them. That one was laughing at the image of a murdered baby. Um, 
there's there's um, other students that were you know said they're atheist pro-choice and they justified murdering babies in the womb they don't even they don't even know even the history teacher told me I don't know I didn't get his name they, a history teacher came out he said that they're not this isn't happening in Florida anymore I was like sir you don't know what you're talking about I've been at the places recently I'm going to one of them today this morning where they murder babies they're murdering babies currently still so even when it, you have a teacher that doesn't even know what he's talking about. I mean, babies, he said, I think it's because there's a six-week ban, a ban that supposedly makes it illegal to murder babies who are six weeks and older. But babies are still being murdered in Florida, here in Tampa. And people don't know that. Or maybe they, they just say that as an excuse, like, we don't, we don't care, you know. And, but the question is, um, what do you, th what, what will you do with what you know? Because um, I think I, I told you, I think I told you, Eric, uh, when I was telling Miss Camilla, um, I didn't know any of this until I never found about any of this in, 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 when I was in high school. Do you guys like one? Some important information, one for both of you. Tells you how to go to heaven. Has the gospel on the back. I, I wish Christians had brought this to my high school and showed me. People complain about these images, these are too graphic, these are gruesome. But yet, those same people have no problem watching Hollywood horror movies filled with blood, sex, gore, and violence on the TV at home with their kids. But then they complain about what's happening in real life, babies being murdered. That's messed up. So I'm showing people what's happening in real life here in Tampa. And I was asked earlier um, by a, a baby murder, an atheist who says she supports baby, or supports baby murder. She says she is pro-choice. She asked me about gun violence, I think it was her, asked me about, you know, do I do anything about gun violence? And I said, she said, more kids die, die I think they gun violence than, you know, babies being murdered in the womb. I said, no. Five, thousands of babies will be murdered just today. Thousands. Surgically in the womb and chemically um, through the pill. That's what this talks about. Talks about um, the pill that, that kills children. Morning, Serge. Do you like? I see my cousin tomorrow, so I'm gonna show her this too. She was talking to me about this too, and like. You know, Some important information on there. Do you, do you want do you do you want another one for her? Some different pieces of literature I'm giving out. Do you want another one for her? Here. Because we be talking like we be like like we be talking like you know. And this you can give this one to her as well. So that's, that's, um, and that's how you, like, we live in a culture that has indoctrinated young people into so many things that there is no God, um, that human life has no value, just like we did in chattel slavery, that the black person outside the womb, he's not a person, he's not a human being, or three-fifths of a person. You may have read that in your history books, history, history textbooks. We're doing the same thing to babies in the womb. Hitler said the Jews aren't people, they're parasites. I've heard, you know, I don't know if you'll believe this, but I've heard, I've heard young people call babies parasites in this country. In the last year, I've heard, I've heard people actually call babies parasites in the womb. And then they call themselves parasites. Why do they think that? Well, because they have not been raised in the Bible. They have, been not, they have not been raised to fear God. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. But in America, we don't hate evil. We love evil. We embrace evil. We drink, we drink up evil and iniquity like it's water. That's what the Bible says. And I wasn't raised with the Bible. I mean, I had a Bible, but I never read it until God saved me. Then I had a desire to read the Bible. And as the Bible says in Proverbs, where there is no vision, the people perish. In America, we've lost our vision, the Bible. And we are perishing because of it, because we have no fear of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, there is no fear of God before their eyes. We've lost our fear of God. We, we've made ourselves to be like a false God. We, we think, well, God doesn't exist, and human life has no value, has no purpose. Do any of you know, know um, what your purpose in life is? You're young, so maybe you haven't thought about it. When I was your age, I never really gave it much thought or any thought. Do you know why you why you're here on this earth? Why you why you exist? Any idea? 
Any idea? It's a reason. Yeah, there's a reason. What's that reason? Well, and I, when I was your age, I had no idea either. I wouldn't have. I probably would have been, you know, bl blank stare when I heard that question um, when I was in my teenage years, 16, 17, 18. Well, let me let me answer the question. Um, the question I asked. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, I think it's the last verse, two last verses. God says that the conclusion of the matter, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep His commandments. And the um, we all exist to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. That's the chief end of man. The chief end of man when it's, is to to um, glorify God and enjoy Him forever. To fear God and keep His commandments. But most people, especially in America, we're not living to glorify God and much more tragically we're not going to enjoy him forever that's that's why i'm at this, this at your school because i've already heard from several students from their from their mouths from their actions one student took literature without even really looking at it and tore it up and uh, they're not students are not being taught the fear of god here that's why i'm here um, because jesus said to proclaim preach the gospel to every creature and to disciple the nations how do you do that? How does a Christian do that unless you go without, how do you do that? You go out to the, the way, to the, the places where people are lost in their sin, right? You go to the places where sinners are. You don't, you don't stay in the four walls of your church building. You go out and pro proclaim the gospel everywhere. And so that, that's why I'm here. I, um, I go all, all over the place to proclaim the gospel as, as many other Christians do. And do any of you, do, do any of you have a Bible? You got a Bible? Yeah. Do you, do you want a Bible? I, I have I have a I have a Bible on me. Do you, it, do, you do you want a Bible? You'll take it. Okay. This is a gift from the Lord. Will you read it? Is it? Um, this is, uh, yeah, the full Bible here, for a gift from God. Yeah, read, read that with your cousin. And um, I generally try to keep Bibles on me for those who don't have a Bible, because, yes, we have Bibles everywhere in America, but not everyone has one. I, I've given out several Bibles recently because there are still a decent amount of people that don't have a Bible. Um, and so I try to keep one on me because I don't want anyone to not have a Bible. Because there, there are Christian missionaries in the world, even today and throughout history, they gave their lives for, for that book, the, for the Bible. They gave their lives. They were burned at the stake for even putting that book into English, for, for making that book readily available, available read it, making the Bible readily available for the masses. And today Christians are being tortured and put to death and imprisoned just because they were distributing Bibles. But in America, praise God that we're able to access the Bible freely without being hauled off, without being sent to a gulag to be tortured or worked to death. Currently, that may change, but, um, but treasure that book and um, consider, consider um, just what I've said and um, in light of, of the Bible, because any, anyone who talks to you about God, um, be, be like the, do you know the Bible well at all? Okay, because um, I don't want I don't want to speak things that are above your head. Because when I was your age, I didn't know the Bible hardly at all. Well, there's a group of people called the Bereans in the Book of Acts. The Bereans, they they were listening to the Apostle Paul. Does that name sound familiar? The Apostle Paul. He was Saul. He murdered Christians, and then God saved him. He became Paul. Well, the, there was a group of people called the Bereans. Do you like one, sir? Called the. Um, some important information to consider today. So, um, this is the Christian classroom in session on the public sidewalk. Students here are learning about about God, how to go to heaven, and about the Holocaust of babies that were living in a genocide. Babies are being murdered every day in the womb, preborn babies, here in Tampa included. This is what it looks like when parents murder their children. 
So please, please check that. Please check that out. There's a there's a website on there. You can you can look up. Uh, have a good day, sir. Um. So, <coughs> the Bereans they listened to Paul, but they didn't just take his word for it. They examined the scriptures to see if what he was, if these things were so, if what Paul was saying was true. So I encourage you to do that, Miss Camilla, to to examine the scriptures to see if what I'm saying is true. You may not remember all that I'm saying, but um, just to see, like, and just see what does the Bible say. What does God say about my sin? What does God say about His holiness? Do you know what the Bible says about sin? It says that, it says a lot of stuff, things about our sin, but it says, for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. <coughs> and it says, there are many that are trying to work their way to heaven in America, probably in the school, who are trying to make go to heaven because of their so-called good deeds. Well, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, that our righteous deeds are like filthy garments before God. So all the righteous deeds that we that we do, um, mowing our neighbor's lawn, um, helping our neighbors with whatever they need, helping an old lady across the street, we think that's going to get me to heaven because my, my good works will outweigh my bad works. No, not in, not in God's court of law. Because just like a good judge in America or anywhere in the world, when he has a guilty criminal before him, the guilty criminal, a guy just robbed a bank, but he tells the judge, judge, I know I robbed the bank, um, and I, I know that I, I stole other property, and but I'm a good person, I help out the poor, I give to charity. Is that judge gonna let him go because of what he, he only spent, you know, um, he spent a few hours robbing a bank. Is a judge gonna let him go because he spends all his other time doing, other, doing good things? So what about God? Is God, is God a perfect, righteous judge? Yes, he is. And because of that, do I have ladies like some literature, something to think about as you go into school? The Christian classroom is in session currently on the public sidewalk. You're welcome to join. Um, so a, since, because God is a perfect, righteous, just judge, he cannot let guilty criminals go. Just like a judge who's not even holy, but, it, but does um, some type of justice would not let a guilty criminal go. If he did, he was, we would say he's an unjust judge. He should be removed from his position, right? But God's a just judge. He cannot let, he cannot forgive us without there being a, a, um, an atonement, a payment. Because a guilty criminal in the court of God's law, it, there, there must be a payment to satisfy God's wrath. You know what that payment was? Jesus Christ. That the Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed himself on the cross, shed his blood. He was taken down from the cross, buried in a borrowed tomb, and rose again for the third day. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Out here, as a Christian, I stand upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm here to preach Christ crucified, to Jews a stumbling block, to Gentiles foolishness. That's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 2, or chapter 1 through 3. And so that, and um, if you haven't really read the Bible before, this may be kind of like, you're not really sure what I'm saying, but it's... Um, but that's we need like we need to know the Bible because the, the reason why our nation is just going down the toilet is because we've taken that book and thrown it in the trash can just like we do with children every day we take we took the Bible and threw it in the trash can um, in, in the 60s that book the Bible was banned from the public school system when I was growing up in the public school system I never saw a Bible that I can recall never saw anyone praying it was banned so we threw the Bible in the trash can and then we and then we threw babies, started throwing babies in the trash can, children in the trash can. And this, and right here in Tampa this morning, children are being treated like trash, and the image of God, we're all made in God's image, including babies in the womb. The, the image of God is being treated like garbage in Tampa today. That's pretty heavy, right? That's pretty heavy to take in when you've never heard this before. But that's... And you, and you may not have been ready for it, but it's, it's something really serious to think about. The fact that you're living in a holocaust. You can look up the word holocaust, see what it means, right? It's, yeah. yeah, well, what, what, what do they say it means?
Yeah, that's, that's, and then it was like, like a valley where all the dead bodies would be. And the valley, and put them, put them out. Dude, and you know what, what, what we did um, when the death camps were lived <coughs> at the end of World War II? The final solution, that's what it's called, the final solution. Um, the, the, um, it was the Hitler's final solution to the Jewish question. Do you know what we did? We, um, I think it was, um, uh, we took the German citizens that, that did nothing when the death camps were in their backyard and we walked them through the death camps, made them see what they had tolerated on their watch, all the dead bodies of Jews stacked up. We made them look at it, made them, forced them. So today, I'm not even forcing anyone to look at this, at this murdered baby. I'm simply putting it on a public sidewalk so, so people can see it. So I'm not even doing what they did. I'm not like grabbing people and, and forcing them to go to, to, to the uh, death camps to see. Um, if I could take you all to the local abortion mill, and sh the murder mill, baby murder mill, child sacrifice center, and show you what these babies' bodies, I would do it. Or if I could bring the baby's bodies to you, I would do it. Um, but then I'd be charged with, um, with illegal possession of, of, of a dead body. <laughs> even though this culture says these aren't human beings. Even the, uh, your history teacher went in there says these aren't human beings. <laughs> it's it's ironic, but but I can't do that. So I'm doing the next best thing by bringing the pictures of these murdered children to your attention, with the hope that someone will have compassion. Not many will, very few will. Just like very few had compassion in Nazi Germany during the Final Solution, very few had compassion in America during the days of brutal chattel slavery. Not many had compassion at all. They they uh, they either openly supported it or they are totally apathetic. So I want to. Um, did you both get one of these? This is uh, you get, and you got one. That's Miss Camilla. <laughs> so that's you're you're all young. You're younger than me, um, and so you have. Um, unless the Lord requires your life of you soon. Because people die every day, old and young. Do y'all like one? No, I'm not. Okay. Um, unless the Lord requires your life of you um, sooner than He requires my life, you have time to think about what's going on in my country and um, what can, what can I do about this? Because we can all do something. Yes, you may say I'm one person, but what can I do? I'm one person. I'm doing what I can do. Educating the masses, telling them what I didn't know until. I was an adult, and and a, but again, consider the most important thing is where do you stand before God? And that's that, that is the most important question for you to consider today. Um, is if I die today, would I go to heaven or would I go to hell? You know what the Bible says about hell? The Bible says that hell is a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm does not die, where the fire is not quenched. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ said, <coughs> do not fear him who has the, um, a bit, to, has the uh, power, to, to, who has the ability to kill your body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who has the power and the authority to cast both body and soul into hell. You see, the worst a man can do to you is kill you on this earth. But God can throw you into hell for all eternity. And he, and he will do that to, the, to those who die in their sins. Again, the Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the, free, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all deserve the death penalty called hell for our sins because we all have sinned against the Holy God. Because we've all violated the Ten Commandments. Do you know the Ten Commandments? I mean, you have them written on your heart, your conscience conscience means with knowledge so you have that you you, you you know them but you may not know that you know them because because they're written on your heart it like once I start reciting them you'll, you'll probably recognize them right you, you shall have no other gods before me the first commandment you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain third commandment honor your father and mother you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness or tell a lie and um, so, I mean, if you've ever told a lie, stolen anything, regardless of value, committed murder, murdered a baby, or 
Jesus said, if, if you hate your brother, you've committed, you've murdered him in your heart. So probably everybody out here is a murderer. I'm a repentant murderer because I've hated my brother in my heart. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. So according to what Jesus said, I'm a murderer at heart or I was. A, a redeemed murderer. I'm no longer a sinner, but a saint. And if, you'd, if you've ever dishonored your parents, put, any, put anything or anyone before God, profane God's name, taking God's name in vain, then just like everybody else, like I was, you're a sinner that needs the grace and mercy of God. Does all, does all this make sense? And the gospel can say, um, that's why I gave you the gospel. Because once I take you through God's law, then you recognize I'm a sinner. Because as God says in Romans chapter 3, now whatever the law says, God's law, now whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. <coughs> so that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God. For by the works of the law, no, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. God's law. So I, I give you the, the God's law, and then th there, and then there comes the knowledge of sin, right? Oh, it's, hot yeah, it's, it's hot out here. I appreciate you listening to me. Yes. And Eric and Marco. Marco, I think. Okay, Marco and, <coughs> and Miss Camilla. Well, thank you for entering the Christian classroom today on the public sidewalk. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Please think about these things, okay? Yes, sir. I appreciate Ms. Camilla. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. you as well, Miss Camilla, Eric, and Marco. I'm, I'm praying for you. I want you to join me in heaven. I want you to join me in heaven. Please think, please think about these things, okay? Thank you for your time.